All right, so as we said, Doug Bowser has spoken in an interview to the press at Universal Studios Hollywood when Super Nintendo World opened, and there's a lot of juicy stuff. Now, it's a little lengthy, but it shouldn't be super long. We're going to go through it, read the questions that were asked to him, read his answers, and give my input on it. So, this is great stuff, because... If you guys think, oh, it's just some president, you know, he's not going to say much, guys. This, while I'm not going to say uh, that, that we're going to get a Switch 2 confirmed, it's pretty good to read and it's good to know and it kind of explains why they've done this or done that or what they think of this. It's good to hear and it's good to know. So, the first question that, that they asked Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser is, you've got a new movie the Mario movie, April 7th, this new attraction at Universal, and the new Zelda game, Tears of the Kingdom, May 12th. What's next? A prestige streaming TV show? And then he said, you're hitting on something which is really important. This is a milestone. What you're seeing here with Super Nintendo World, Universal Studios is a great partner to allow us to do Super Nintendo World. I won't comment on your question regarding a streaming show, but it really is a reflection on this ability to share our IP with people well outside of the video game space. So, not much to take away from there, it's just kind of a standard answer, but it does get a little better. Next, they asked him, the new attraction I was able to, to see today is really impressive. Could there ever be an entire theme park built around Nintendo characters Sort of like Disneyland. And he said, well, we've got a great partner with Universal Studios. I think we have packed a lot of exciting and fun stuff. Even with the size of the park here, you can spend hours just exploring, finding little Easter eggs, little treasures. If you load the app on your phone, you can actually keep score. It's very much like being in a video game with the ability to play in a linear way, but then also wander, wander around and explore. So once, I mean, I guess we're having some standard answers. You know, it's, it's a nice description, and that does make me a bit more excited to actually go to Super Nintendo World, but I want to get to like the, 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 the cool Switch 2 stuff. Then they asked him, what do you say video games are now the dominant force in entertainment? He said, they're clearly a prominent form of entertainment right now. As we came through and out of the pandemic, they became an incredible source, if you will, of people's entertainment. We saw very nice growth in the industry over the last few years, with people looking for different forms to entertain themselves at home, either as an individual online or with the family. So I do think it's a form of entertainment going forward that people will continue to choose. Next, they asked him, what other characters besides the Mario Bros would you like to develop new films or attractions around? Full disclosure, I've got a Donkey Kong tattoo. I'd be thrilled with a Donkey Kong movie, for example. What a savage reporter. Anyways, he says, That really is a call for the creative groups here at Universal Studios and, of course, Nintendo. Obviously. If you think about park experiences, we have announced that at the Universal Studios in Osaka that will be expanding that land to include Donkey Kong. There's a whole new Donkey Kong area being built out with its primary feature being a roller coaster. You can just imagine what a Donkey Kong roller coaster might be like. We have announced that we are working on other video projects, but we're not at the point where we want to talk about what these characters are. Let's pause right there. So, remember that rumor that we discussed on a podcast where we talked about how a Zelda movie is is said to be in the works. He said that we have other video projects in the works. I don't want to talk about what these characters are, he said. I guarantee you one of them is Zelda and Link. Who else are they going to make a movie on? Who, what other series or franchise or, you know, whatever, are they going to make a movie? It's, it's Zelda. It's Link and Zelda. So there are other video projects, and they have said that, I guarantee you it's Zelda. Anyways, after that, he said, I could share my favorites, but that probably wouldn't be appropriate. If you've noticed with the new Super Mario Bros. movie, Seth Rogen does play Donkey Kong. So Donkey Kong is a part of the movie. So look forward to that. I mean, obviously. Okay, you know what? PR answers. These are standard, right? So next, they asked him, is there any date 
for the Nintendo attractions at Universal Studios in Orlando and Singapore. Will they be bigger, different? He said, no date on Singapore. Orlando is a couple years in the future. You'll have to wait and see. You can assume, if you look at Orlando, it's got a lot of land, so it's likely a bigger footprint. So we'll have to see what the Orlando one looks like when we actually get it. Next, they asked him something juicy. When is the next Switch coming out? What kinds of features or new capabilities would you like to see? He said, something juicy, and here's where it gets really good. As we enter the seventh year for the Nintendo Switch, sales are still strong. I think we still have a very, very strong lineup coming. Pause. You have Tears of the Kingdom, Pikmin 4, and he says they still have a very, very strong lineup coming. Aside from those, they must have something else in the works that is pretty big. Mario Odyssey 2? I don't know. Let's continue. He said, as Mr. Furukawa said recently, we're entering uncharted territory with the platform. It's exciting to see that demand is still there. So nothing to announce on any future console or device, but we are still feeling very bullish about Nintendo Switch. I should be careful about what I personally would like to see in a new Switch, but what I can share is that one of the reasons that even going into year 7, we feel very confident that the Switch can have strong performance over the next few years is that it is still truly that unique device that you can play in a variety of ways at home, on the go. One of the things we look at always is how can we surprise and delight? How can we introduce new unique ways of playing? That's always in the front of our mind. Then they asked him, is Madden coming to the Switch? Seriously? Okay, you know what? He says, that's a better question for my good friends over at EA. Like, he knew that that was a dumb question. But honestly, I don't blame the interviewer. I kind of wanted to know the same thing. So, yeah. EA, bring Madden to the Switch. Next, the interviewer asks, are supply chain problems still an issue? Doug Bowser says, really coming out of the summer and into the final quarter of last year, the holiday period, we saw that constriction, if you will, and ship supply reduce. So right now, from a supply chain perspective, we're able to supply that demand that's out there. Next, they asked him, how did you get to a $70 price figure for the upcoming Zelda game? He says, we look at what the game has to offer. I think fans will find this is an incredibly full, deeply immersive experience. The price point reflects the type of experience that fans can expect when it comes to playing this particular game. This isn't a price point that we'll necessarily have on all of our titles. It's actually a fairly common pricing model, either here or in Europe or other parts of the world, where the pricing may vary depending on the game itself. Next, he was asked, any sales goals for the new Zelda? He said, there are, but they're not publicly disclosed yet. Then they asked him, what's the next big thing in gaming? The metaverse, AI, what else? He says, I think what you'll see with gaming is that we'll continue to see new technologies come into play that will allow us to expand the number of players that come in. As we think about technology, the most important thing is we think about how it will improve the gameplay experience. It's not technology for technology's sake. Will it really create this experience that is immersive, that creates smiles? We lead with that and then see what technology can support that. And that concludes the interview. There was a lot of cool stuff said there. Honestly, I had fun reading that. It was great. I do like to hear more of what he's thinking and what he knows. It's always good to hear Nintendo be kind of open, or, you know, at the very least, more open. Now, my biggest takeaway, honestly, was either one, that, that they're working on other movies or video projects, and it has, obviously, characters in it, he says he can't say what the characters are. That kind of gives me confirmation. It's definitely Link and Zelda. And then other than that, he said for the Switch, they still feel strong and they have a strong lineup. I'm really interested to see what other games they have coming out for the Switch. We'll definitely get something big revealed in the September Direct this year. But we got to wait. We got to see what other games are coming to the Switch. Otherwise.